For the record, I wasn't looking to get my mind demolished, but apparently that's what a Silva Gunner video can do to a person. Now, for you to fully understand how my mind was absolutely obliterated, we have to go back. I mean way back. 11 years ago. Around the summer of 2006. I was a young child, almost 7 years old. Our family went on a trip to see my uncle who had a place by the lake. They had a boat, and we went tubing, which was pretty insane for my young mind. But the thing that I remembered most from the trip wasn't the lake, the trampoline, or even my relatives. You see, they had a Nintendo 64. With Mario 64. The moment I saw the cover of that game inside that system, intrigue flooded my being. I remember briefly getting to watch some of my older cousins play it. The game was full of mystery to me. I distinctly remember Wet Dry World. The way they changed the water level up and down blew my tiny mind. I wanted nothing more than to play that game for hours. <sighs> Sadly, Mario 64 wasn't the reason why we were visiting our relatives, and I was too terrified to ask my cousins or my uncle if I could play. So after a couple of days we went home, and I had the memories of Mario 64 still swimming through my head. This was the start of my absolute obsession with Mario. I started wearing overalls, red shirts, searched our closet for white gloves. I found a pair, but they were a little dirty. I didn't care. The next time we went shoe shopping, I made sure my shoes were brown. We had a red baseball cap, so I got my mom to sew a white circle with a red M in the middle onto the front. I went to school dressed up like this very often. A childhood friend of mine was also really into Mario. We played on the playground and he would pretend to be King Boo. I didn't know the character very well, we didn't have a GameCube at the time. Once I went over to my friend's place and we played Mario Sunshine and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Seeing Mario with a water jetpack blew my mind even more. Eventually, our family got a GameCube. I got Mario Sunshine for Christmas. I was the happiest child alive. Still, the memory of Mario 64 hung in the back of my head. I was at another friend's house a couple years later. He had Mario 64, so I watched him play a bit. It was really exciting, and he let me read his strategy guide. But then, he entered Hazy May's cave. Something about the low music, green walls, and spooky atmosphere really struck me. My parents came to pick me up to go to my baseball game, but I couldn't. I knew I wasn't actually sick, but I felt sick. Very sick. Something about that level filled me with unease. Fast forward a couple years and we finally got a Nintendo Wii. It would still be a while before I played Mario Galaxy, but in the meantime we decided to check out the Wii Shop channel. The ability to play retro games on our Wii? It was nuts! And then I saw it, staring at me. Mario 64 on the Virtual Console. I knew I had to get it. And so, we did. I was the first to play it. I was pumped. I finally got to explore the world of mystery and wonder that my childhood was built from. My mom stopped me about a half hour in. She said I had to clean the basement before I could play anymore. So I did, and I went back to my game. She came down to inspect the basement and found a bunch of toys in the corner that I had overlooked. Despite my protests, I wasn't allowed to play Mario 64 for the rest of the evening. So I had to watch my brother play instead. Eventually, I beat the game. I sat there and watched the credits, listening to the music. The final screen showed. I paused for a moment. Then I got up, turned off the Wii, went to my room, and cried. Fast forward a couple more years, I saw a TAS of Mario 64 on YouTube, beating it with zero stars in like five minutes. I started to watch some speedruns of Mario 64. Eventually, I came across Pan & Coek 2012's legendary Watch for Rolling Rocks in 0.5 A-Presses video, and of course, alongside that, TJ Henry Yoshi. But this was only one part of the story. To get the full story, we have to go back in time again. I was about 13 years old at a friend's cabin when they started to play The Binding of Isaac. I didn't understand the game, but it intrigued me, so I looked it up when I got home. I watched a video of all the endings. It was definitely darker than I expected. I remember it really creeped me out at the time. But like most things that scare us initially, I started to become extremely interested in the game. I started watching people play it. Northern Lion, Biznap, 
Biznap especially. The long videos helped me fall asleep. Because I watched so many Isaac videos, YouTube recommended a video by Tears of Grace. He was pretty good, so I subscribed. While watching one of his Isaac videos, he referenced Scatman. It sounded kind of funny, so I looked him up. I knew he must be a meme to some extent, so I looked up some of his other music like Scatman's World and Everybody Jam. It was pretty catchy, so I downloaded some of it. Now we need to go back to my childhood one last time to fully explain how this Silva Gunner video destroyed my mind. My childhood was pretty simple. I went to school, played video games, watched all the Blues Clues, Flintstones, and VeggieTales I could ask for. As a child, I didn't have much spending money. We never had an allowance or anything. So, when I was 12 and I managed to scrape together $300 for a 4th generation iPod Touch, I didn't exactly have a ton of money to buy apps. So, when I heard of jailbreaking, I was very interested. My efforts to figure it all out built up my interest of computers. My brother had a PSP with Monster Hunter Freedom Unite on it. When I got a PSP, I decided to install custom firmware and get the game as well. To do both of these things, I had to further build my knowledge of computers. My interest in computers continued to grow over the next five years. Eventually, I was recommended a video from Vine Sauce of Joel destroying Windows XP. After watching some more Vine Sauce videos, I eventually came across Wheelchair Mario 64. It was so absurd, but the thing that stuck with me was how every text box read shoutouts to Simple Flips. I'd never heard of Simple Flips, so I decided to check them out. After seeing some awesome stream highlights, I subscribed. This brings us to last night. I was watching Simple Flips when he referenced the Great Entertainer meme. Dear Diary, I finally caught a Simple Flip stream. He spent four hours trying to go under a pipe. Approaching hour five, he looked into the camera and said, I just can't do it anymore. He then started playing Barbie Dreamhouse Party and fell asleep on camera. Great entertainer he is. I was watching his epic save of the year video when I heard the end theme of Mario 64 playing in the background. I knew that theme anywhere as it had such a lasting impression on me as a child. But this wasn't the regular end theme. Part of it was the Undertale theme? I looked in the comments to find the source. It was from a channel called Timmy Turner's Granddad. His staff role video had themes from everything from Undertale to I Play Pokemon Go to the Tetris theme to Shelter by Porter Robinson. It was my first introduction to parody rips. This genre of video pretends to be like a soundtrack of a video game, but instead replaces the game music with a bunch of memes. I like it. So I scrolled down, and who did I find smiling at me in the comments? TJ Henry Yoshi. This itself felt like a weird coincidence, but I knew the rabbit hole could go further. I scrolled further down and saw mentions of Silva Gunner. I had heard this name many times before. It was almost legendary. I heard about channel deaths, fan bases, lore. I was so confused, so I searched Silva Gunner on YouTube, went to the channel, and watched a video. It was a parody rip, just like the Timmy Turner's Granddad video. I watched another, another parody rip. Super Mario World rips, Mario Sunshine rips, and of course, Mario 64 rips. So I went to the video entitled File Select Super Mario 64. It starts as normal, sounds just like the Mario 64 file select, but then it changes. A vaguely familiar tune. I start to freak out. Is, is that? No. S Scatman's world? No, no, it couldn't be. It, yeah, yes, it, it was! It was a transposed version of Scatman's world made to fit the Mario 64 file select screen. Just then, the bass line turns into the Flintstones theme. At this point, my jaw has dropped and I feel like this is the punchline to a joke that spanned my entire life. I scroll down to the comments and see TJ Henry Yoshi is the top comment. The music returns to normal. Is it over? Before I can gather my thoughts, I hear Pan and Coek 2012 start to explain Watch for Rolling Rocks. Everything was connected. My uncle's cabin, Mario 64, Hazy Maze Cave, Watch for Rolling Rocks, Pan and Coek 2012, TJ Henry Yoshi. The Binding of Isaac, Biznap, Tears of Grace, Scatman, Scatman's World. No allowance, Flintstones, Computers, Vine Sauce, Simple Flips, End Credits Music, Timmy Turner's Granddad, Silva Gunner. <sighs> it was at this moment that my mind was destroyed. Every event of my life was leading up to this moment. This moment of pure meme bliss. 
I have never been the same since.